Spirit washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song.
for y'all truly grateful on this Thanksgiving season.
Let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say praise the Lord. To the stewards and the trustees, class leaders, ushers, to the wonderful members of St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church, and to my wife, Dr. Patricia Ingram, of over 32 years, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, now let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be accepted in our sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let your servant be an instrument of your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is that season of preparation for the coming of the Christ. And so we begin four Sundays prior to Christmas with the Advent season. And this is the very first Sunday of Advent. It's also the very first Sunday of the Christian year. And so let us praise God together as we celebrate Advent. Charles Dickens wrote an epic novel. No, not A Tale of Two Cities. No, not David Copperfield. But that novel called Great Expectations. In that novel, Pip, the central character, expects three times to receive benefits in his life. As a young child, as an orphan, then later as an adolescent, and then later as an adult. Each time he's looked for great expectations to happen to him. And in a similar way to this great novel of Dickens, we come to the Advent season with that same anticipation of expectation. And so for these next few weeks, we'll talk about great expectation. Let us go now and look at the Word of God as found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 21. I'd like to read for your hearing verses 29 through 33, but later when you have time, you can read the entire pericope 25 through 36. Hear God's word. Then he said to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things take place, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. Very truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have been taken place. Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my words, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not. I want to remind you to focus on you shall all see, so see these things taking place, and you will know that the kingdom of God is near. When I was a child, from Halloween to Christmas was one of the longest times of the year, in particular from Thanksgiving to Christmas. It seemed like those days went by like many, many, many years. From sun up to sundown seemed to go so very slow. It seemed to be so painfully uh, arduous. It was primarily because we had some expectation of what would happen on Christmas morning. And because we had great desire to get there, it appeared as if it would never come. And so in a similar way, with the Hebrew people, who for many years had heard the prophets tell them that the kingdom of God will be restored 
and that the anointed one would come, the Messiah. For 400 years, they had been without a prophet. And they were expecting God to do something, but yet they could not see when it would happen. The delay seemed to for them as if it would be it would deny the reality of the existence. And so in a similar way, for those of us who are living in the 21st century, 20 centuries after the death and resurrection of Christ and his prediction of his return, we seem to have that same sense of anxiety, that same sense of anticipation, that same sense of anguish because it seems like the kingdom of God, the returning of Christ, is not coming at the time we want it to come. It is coming so slowly for us that we almost feel like it's not going to happen. But I'm here to tell you, God has equipped us with the single point that would help us and so that is, God has equipped us with the hope of his coming. The hope of his coming is what we want to talk about today as the first installment of great expectations. The hope of the coming rests itself in the fact that hope provides for us the assurance of God's delivery. Listen to what the parable says in the beginning, verse 29. The parable says that when you see a tree or a, a fig tree buds, when you see all the trees begin to bring their leaves out, you know that springtime has become closer to its end and summer is almost near. It is the evidence of what it will happen. It is the assurance of what will come. It gives us the assurance that there will be a bright side. There will be warm days. So in a similar way, when we see these things happen about the times of Christ, the fall of Jerusalem, when we see the change of life occur around us, when we see the great tribulations, when we see the Son of Man coming toward us, we know he is almost here. He's, he's not here when we want him, but he's here when we need him. He's not here when we desire, he's here when he's planned to come. And it is in this thing that we ought to learn and be assured that God is true to God's word. God will not forsake us. God will not leave us. The hope of Christ anticipates for us the joy of heaven. The hope of Christ anticipates for us the bliss of salvation. And therefore, we must remind ourselves that we are to be assured when we can just see a foretaste of glory divine. Hope is kind of like that light at the very end of the tunnel. It reminds us that there is a bright side somewhere. Therefore, we ought not to be despair when things don't go exactly as we expect. We ought to keep the faith and be encouraged that there is an assurance of hope. Hope provides us the assurance that there is a God somewhere. And then secondly, hope instills in us insurance. You know, you've watched all these insurance commercials on television like State Farm, like Prudential, like Aflac, and all of them and promise you that, that, that you're in good hands, that they will take care of you, that no matter what happens, they will fix it. But there is nobody that can insure us against the dangers of life, both seen and unseen, like God. God can handle our sudden illnesses and make us know that we are cared for and that God will care for us. 
God can take our financial dysfunctions and he can take the little we believe we have and make it much. He can take the little we have and stretch it over our bills. All we must do is trust God and know that God will and God can. God can insure us against the wiles of the devil, against those things that Satan plans against us to take away our joy, to steal our salvation, to remove from us the confidence that God does deliver his people from a weary land. So we must remember that the wiles of the devil cannot prevail against us. And then thirdly, we, we must also remember that the hounds of hell, though they dog our tracks, if we trust the assur insurance of God, that God will keep them from tearing us apart. The hounds of hell that Howard Thurman talks about, those things that dog us, that follow us everywhere we go, that try to discourage us, that try to defeat us, that try to delay us, that try to deny us, cannot keep us down if we keep our hope in God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust no sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. The solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Our hope is, the, uh, is, is, is an assurance against the, the, the devastation, against the defeats, against the disappointments, against the dissipations of life. It is our hope that ensures us and instills in us the, the confidence that God will. And then thirdly, hope provides for us what we need, faith. Faith in the triune God. Faith in the unseen movements of God. Faith in the uncertain cares of God. Faith in those things of God that we cannot see and we hope for, but, but, but we cannot completely know that God is coming. And yet we know what God has already done is a prelude and a, to what God will do. We know that because Christ came through 40 and two generations, because he climbed up on an old rugged cross, because he was on a tree, he then provides for us that faith that if we will just trust what he's already done, what he will do will come to pass. He will come to receive us again. He will swing the chariot low that we might get on and ride on home to glory. He will send the gospel train. But if he don't send the chariot, if he don't send the, 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 the gospel ship, if he don't send the gospel train, I'm so glad that God will send us some wings. Yes, I know that there are three ways that you can go to heaven. You can go to heaven by walking. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. But I don't want to trust my feet because my feet may get tired. Well, you can go to heaven on the gospel ship. But I don't want to trust that because I may get seasick. But I want to join God's Air Force. Some glad morning, when this life is over, I want him to provide for me some wings so that I can fly away. Two wings to cover my face. Two wings to cover my feet. Two wings to cover, to fly with. And if these wings fail me, just drop me down another pair. I want to fly home to glory. Faith provides, faith, hope provides us faith in God's power. That the power of God is evident at Calvary. Faith provides us, uh, makes provisions for us that is evident at the tomb where he climbed up out of a three-day grave. Faith is evident in the presence of God that in the resurrection we know that God's power will avail for us. And so, my brothers and sisters, 
If you are having some challenges today, just keep your hope. Just have high hope. Hope in God. Trust in God. Believe in God. And know that Jesus did not go to Calvary so that you can be all by yourself. It is, it is that Friday evening that, that seemed like a defeat that he turned on Sunday morning into a victory. It is that Friday evening that they took a rock off of a rock and put the rock inside of a rock. It is that, that, that morning when that rock that was inside of a rock had a rock rolled in front of a rock and the rock kept the rock inside of a rock. But early that Sunday morning, the rock rolled the stone away that the rock may come out Rock of ages, play for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And so therefore we will trust in God. We will have hope in Christ. We will know that no matter what comes, he is coming again. How do you know when he's coming, Pastor? I'm glad you asked me that question. Sandy Patty sung that Dottie Rebel, Dottie Rebel song. When the clouds shall appear. And we see the angels coming down. We shall behold him face to face. When we see the crowds, we know that our hope has been fitly placed. When we see the crowds and the angels, we know that our hope has been anchored in the right place. When we see the crowds coming, we know that he has come for us. And so some glad morning, when this life is over, I don't know about you, but I want to fly away. And I know he's coming. He's coming for the ransom. He's coming for the pure in heart. He's coming for those of us who have been redeemed by his blood and trust and have faith in him. All because our hope is anchored in him. That's good news for people who have great expectations.
And now, my brothers and sisters, if you've been expecting something and you have not received it, but today you've heard the call of God moving on the altars of your heart, you've heard God convict your spirit. You've heard God convert your soul. You felt God moving in a way that convinced you to trust him. Won't you trust God today by giving your life to Christ? I know that's church talk. Here is what I mean by that. If you're driving on First Street at the corner or between Avenue D and Avenue B, and a tractor trailer truck which had no business on the street ran over you, are you sure you would go to heaven? If you're not sure, you need to come and give your life to Christ today. You need to pray the prayer of salvation. And God will save your heart and soul. Secondly, if you're here and you used to walk in the light of your conviction for Christ. And you need to be recommitted. Come on, I'm a hookup man. I can hook you back up. And thirdly, if you're looking for a church home. If your church home is not in the Dallas County area or in the surrounding counties, Collin or Rockwall or uh, Tarrant or Denton County or Ellis County, and you live in the very near area to Garland, we invite you to join St. Luke. It's a mighty good place. It has landed many a thousand. Well, Pastor, this is a virtual situation. How do I how do I do this? All you need to do is to go to the chat line, put your name and your telephone number, and we will call you very soon. If you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, if you want to join a church, call St. Luke. We invite you to come today and we will receive you. Now, let, let, let me pray for you in this moment. Dear God, we realize we're sinners. We confess that we've done wrong. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Now, God, we declare we believe that Jesus is the Lord of our lives, that he died on Calvary, and he arose from the grave. And he had all power to redeem us of our sins and to bring us unto salvation. And we also believe that he's coming again. And we have the great expectation that we shall receive him unto ourselves. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.